Hey guys, Turk here. Thanks for swinging by the channel. I've heard this a lot on my Discord server and it usually comes out like this. Why am I not growing? Why am I not seeing a lot of views hitting my channel? Well, instead of just giving you a bunch of generic advice or things you could find elsewhere on YouTube, I'm actually going to equip you with a few different tools to hopefully help you figure out why it is exactly you're not growing. So stay tuned to this video. We're going to learn a thing or two. You guys have probably heard this several times. You've got a network, you've got to play unsaturated games, X, Y, and Z. There's a whole bunch of different things of uh, pointers of advice, and there's a, about a thousand people you've probably heard this from as well. But today we're gonna actually look at some of these tools so that you can make decisions for yourself. And that first tool is socialblade.com. It's a very popular, super high level analytics tool that will hopefully help you get kind of a, a good general idea of what you can, where you can go with your channel. So what you gotta do is you go to socialblade.com, you're gonna need to authenticate and link your Twitch, YouTube, other types of social media to their service. And then after you visit their page a few times, you will actually start to you know, collect some data. Go over to the favorites tab, you could actually input some of the different YouTube channels or fellow streamers or Twitch people that you like to follow, and you can actually see how they're doing in comparison to your channel. But for our purposes today, we're gonna stick to just looking at our own analytics. So when I go to socialblade.com, there's three different pieces of information I'm looking for and different trends I'm trying to analyze. The first is, where have I been in the past 90 days? The second is, where does Social Blade think I'm gonna be in the next 90 days, one year, whatever? And then the third thing is, of the things I've changed with my own stream, can I see that change in my data? So let's dig down a little deeper uh, into my analytics. So the first tab that always pops up is your user summary, and this just gives you a broad, you know, weekly, monthly uh, analysis of, you know, your basic follower count trends as well as your view count trends. For my purposes, I'm not really tracking that too much. But what I like to do is go to the detailed statistics page to look at that past performance metric. And here we can actually view, you know, I, I don't know what the actual date is, but you can see a lot of different dates and a lot of data for your follower count as well as your viewer count. The next thing I like to look for is my future projections, and that's here under future projections. With Social Blade, they take all of your previous recorded data and they actually perform some calculations in order to kind of guess where you'll be in the next, you know, up to five years from now. So scrolling down, you get this nice little chart that shows, you know, based on what date, what their follower and your viewer count's gonna look like. Uh, for me, I like to use this as a goal setting tool. So if I think, you know, by January 2020, I'm gonna hit 19,000 views, that seems like a pretty realistic goal to, hit, goal to set. So I'll keep that in my mind as I go forward, changing things with my stream. And same thing with the follower count. The tool thinks I'm gonna be hitting about 1,900 followers. That might sound like a good idea. You might wanna be a little more pa uh, conservative in your estimates. You know, holidays are coming, you might not stream as much. So th this, this tool is a really good way to kind of gauge where you're going to be in the future, but also it helps give you insight as to, you know, things you can change and some higher level strategies you can perform in order to get somewhere. So if you're looking for ways to enhance your stream or get better growth, you've probably heard the advice of don't play saturated games. Well, how exactly do you figure that out? Well, this is the site I like to go to answer that question. This is called twitchstrike.com, and it's a really good tool for looking at uh, past performance of different games and different intervals, and specifically what times these games are being played, and also the types of viewers, or the quantity of viewers that are played with each game. So where I go is I like to go to the guides tab, and then what to stream on Twitch. There's also one for what not to stream on Twitch and when to stream on Twitch. We'll cover those a little bit while we go onto this one tab, but what to stream on Twitch, let's click on that. And then from here, it's gonna give you 
what it thinks based on like the prior hours of performance. Uh, but this basically gives you kind of a, if you were to play right now, these games might be a good option for you to play. So just browsing through, what I like to do is I like to look and see which games have, are, are really on the list, which games I actually own. And the third important metric is what are the uh, amount of viewers the top 5% own? So we can talk about this in another video, but more or less, the smaller this bar is, or the lower the percentage is, the better chance you have as a smaller streamer to get views. So let's take uh, slots here for an example. Right now it's got 84 channels, but it says it's got 17,000 viewers, and you might think, holy cow, that's a great place that I can play and start playing a game. Well, let's tap the brakes here and let's take a look at this chart. This little bar graph here says, the amount of viewers that the top 5% of channels own. So what that tells us is about half of all of the viewers that are in this one game are being viewed by the top 5% of channels. So what once was a really good number, 17,000 views, like eight channels have all of those views, maybe 16 channels. So the odds of you performing well in this game are pretty low. So I like to steer clear of games that have really hard, uh, high percentages like that. And I go to games kind of like Rust, where there's only 4,000 viewers and there's a, a big chunk of channels on there, but there's a pretty good chance that you could get us a, a few views on that. Uh, so that's just views and how many people are watching what channels. But more importantly, which games do you own and which games are actually fun? So like F1 2019, I run that as a benchmark for some of my testing I do, but I don't really enjoy the game all that much. So me playing that doesn't really make sense for my use. Um, another good game, Ark. You know, I love survival games. This one's similar to Rust and it's got building mechanics in it, but you know, I don't own the game. So is it worth me spending 30 bucks to buy this game? Probably not. Then of course, there's free to play games. You know, you just go and download it, but do you want to waste your time uh, playing a game that's uh, likely not going to get you a lot of views, but also has a small viewer pool? So this is twitchstrike.com. Uh, let's actually jump into one more piece of information here. So let's go into Star Wars The Old Republic. So when you find a game that you think is interesting, you like the game, you own the game, you can actually go and see how this game performs over time. And we can go in, we can change the date range that Twitch Strike's gonna do its analysis. We can change the time zone that we're playing in so that the time scales are all synced up. And we're gonna actually exclude the top 5% of streams just so that we get a pretty good indicator of, you know, reality. And then down here below, we can see this channel map, heat map, of both uh, the amount of channels that are online, the amount of viewers that are watching at the same time, and then there's the ratio, and that is viewers per channel. And that's a broad mathematical equation. If you've looked through the browsing page, you'll notice there's a bunch of people up here that have a lot of views and have a lot of uh, you know popularity, but as you go down, that viewer counts you know plummets really bad, and there's like a plateau. So I like to keep in mind that this uh, ratio metrics not exactly accurate, but it's at least a good indicator of potential for performance. This is Star Wars The Old Republic. We can see that there's a big bubble of viewers uh, anywhere between noon and 4 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time, uh, but unfortunately at nighttime there is a big bubble of channels that are coming out. So if that if your schedule is more towards, you know, five o'clock to midnight, and you're not in that morning time period, you know, it's probably not a good mix for you for something to play. But don't get me wrong, you can definitely be the exception to the rule, but odds are if you're gonna be streaming at 7 p.m., you know, on a Wednesday here or a Thursday, you know, there's not a lot of viewers out there and there's a lot of channels out there. So that's why I really like Twitch Strike. It helps me kind of hone in, you know, I can stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Mondays I stream from 6 to 10. I can find a game that I own and I play and I like that should perform pretty well from a Twitch analytics perspective. So 
That's how I use this tool. Let me know if this is how you like to use the tool. Uh, hit the subscribe button down below as well as leave a comment. And uh, I'd love to help you walk through this little piece of data. So let's go take a look at our next tool. All right, if you thought the last two tools we looked at were pretty, uh, pretty crazy and pretty like way over your head, solenome.com, I think that's what the web address is. Uh, we'll put it in the annotations or down in the descriptions below. But solenome is the super low level detail analytics to your streams. And it actually helps give a good insight of where Twitch is going as a whole. So when you go to Sully Gnome, the first page you're going to come up across is going to be just a general Twitch analytics and statistics. I think by default, it, de it views a seven day window. But you remember how with Social Blade, I said, you know, it's good to have a 90 day window plus or minus of uh, when you're doing your an analysis. That helps kind of rule out any noise in the system. One thing you'll notice here, World of Warcraft, it just, uh, World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft, World of Warcraft Classic just released. So there is a huge spike in that viewership right now. We don't want that to kind of gauge where we're going two weeks from now, because that game could crater, we don't know. So I like to use 90 days as kind of my, you know, rule of thumb for data analytics. And this, just by clicking the 90 days, it shifts the data out for the tool. And this kind of gives you a high level perspective of where the different games, the different channels, and also some trending games. You might find some fun stuff in this uh, column. Uh, I'm not going to dive too much into the specifics of this tool right now. This is worth a whole video in and of itself. Uh, but, you know, you can look around, you can click on the different channels to view more analytics on the different uh, perspectives. But for what we're going to do today, we're going to look at specific channels. And more importantly, we're going to click on the channels tab on the left, go up to the top and type in our channel or whoever's channel you're wanting to go look at. So once we get to our channel page, it's going to give us again a huge amount of data all at once. And you're going to be tempted to just say, I don't understand this, but let's let's take a step. Let's you know walk through the information here. So up at the top, it's going to take your time frame. Remember, we set it to 90 days. So this automatically sets that to 90 days. And it's going to give us up here at the top kind of a bubble of just some general health stats for our stream. So I average roughly six viewers per stream and I you know, pump out about a thousand hours watched, which is pretty good. Uh, but I am starting to see a follower decline, but I'm getting good views and my peak viewers are down. So. You know, it's kind of interesting, but we're, again, we're looking for trends here, and this is going to help us figure out where we've been and how we're going to get into that growth, growth spiral. Uh, so this chart here on the left, it gives us a by stream, by game, by view analysis of the different games and how well they perform. Since I'm a variety streamer, I, I play a few different games from time to time, and my schedule's pretty set. So... This is a lot of information to look at. We'll go and look into more detail later uh, about some of that stuff. But what I find more important here is just like Social Blade, this tool actually gives us kind of a, uh, a trend line that goes with our follower count as well as our view count. So one thing I'll note here is back in July, I was running a giveaway for a free monitor. That's why we see this huge spike in follows which was part of the entry into the giveaway. So that's why my chart looks so steep. So if you were to like do the math and whatever, you know, this little line right here should be shifted down. So, you know, I should be around, you know, 850 followers or so. Uh, but that's just the way to, you know, view that little chart. And then for the viewers, you know, even with my little uh, giveaway I had, my viewership has been on a pretty consistent you know, line. I'm kind of curious what the the statistics term for that is, uh, but you can see that you know I had a good a good little a good little spike there, but then I leveled out. But then I'm starting to gain some more momentum back. Scrolling down just a bit more, we've got a couple other fun charts uh, re referencing that how I met your mother. This is a pie chart, and uh, the top right one. This is just my average viewers per game. Uh, you know, I've, I try to, I'm still in that 
you know, investigation realm, trying to figure out which game gives me good viewership. And oddly enough, PC Building Simulator is giving me 10 views per stream on average. That's why I'm starting to put it in more regularly in my streams. So this is a good little piece of the pie to look at to uh, get a gauge of what games are performing well for you. Uh, again, down here on the left is time streamed per game, or per, or, yeah, time streamed per game. And you can see, I've played a lot of Rust lately. And if we combine that with me only getting, uh, what, eight views per in Rust, Rust might not be a good game for me to play. So there's a bunch of different ways to uh, take this data and make conclusions. Again, you can hit me up on Twitch, uh, uh, twitch.tv slash the Turk. We can walk through your data and we can kind of make some of these conclusions as well, if you need some help. Uh, game followers per hour. This is a similar metric, but this time it's, you know, how many followers are you getting while you're streaming? So if that's your cup of tea and the metric you're trying to improve, maybe playing a little bit more of these games might help. Um, last thing we'll talk about today for uh, Sully Gnome is this chart. So this is Turk's Twitch game directory position. So when you're playing a game, it's all about getting your your channel higher in the view list, right? So what this little chart does is it shows you where you're at in that particular game rank versus where you are on Twitch. So remember how I said I was doing pretty well with PC Gaming Simulator? So for this particular sample, I'm ranked number one in the game, probably because I was the only person playing the game. Uh, but my Twitch rank was really low, and as my stream progressed, you know, my Twitch rank grew up to about fourth, uh, the 4,000th 4, uh, best stream on the platform. And then there's some other games where, you know, I break that 4,000 threshold. So, again, interesting metrics to see, you know, are some games you're playing not performing as well as you'd hope? Are there some games that are performing better that you might like to play more? No, it just gives you some insight on things you can try and change. So this is Sully Gnome. We can, I could do a whole nother video on just this one website alone. Uh, very powerful tool, whole bunch of different things we can dig out of this one. So that's why I like it, I love data. So there you have it guys and gals. These are the three tools that I use, uh, you know, on a, I'd say maybe monthly basis. Uh, I use these tools to gauge primarily where I've been, where I think I'm going, and also to kind of dig into what my games are doing and seeing if there's things I can tweak or change uh, just from a game selection perspective and a timing perspective. So those two factors alone could help your stream grow a little bit better. You know, again, let me know in the comments down below if some of these tools will work out better for you. You know, if you've got an interesting use case, I'd love to talk to you as well. Uh, but if you liked what you saw today, please hit that, uh, it's not follow on this, this is YouTube. Hit subscribe. I'd love to do more videos like this. Uh, again, Sully Gnome, I could do an entire video in and of itself. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you all have a great day, and I hope to catch you on the stream later. Take care.